Garth, just thoughts on today's proceedings. Um, the draft was, I think, pretty flat overall, meaning you didn't see a lot of big trades uh, up at the beginning of the draft. Uh, and that hopefully means that we got value late in the draft. We'll find out. Um, you know, we continue to be really excited about our player development system and our kids in the academy. And all the kids we looked at today will compare to those kids coming out of the academy. And um, I think we'll take a very young group to preseason, uh, both draft picks and uh, academy kids. And we're really excited about that, about looking at the bottom of our roster and really signing some talented kids. And uh, in both the cases, here today we took really talented kids uh, and kids who maybe aren't ready right away or aren't going to contribute right away uh, in the case of bone maybe not even going to show up right away um, but that's okay you know we, we, we wanted to take kids that we thought had a chance long term and that's how we're building our team does that competition excite you whether it's it's super draft selections and obviously now the academy pipeline has become significantly robust to have that level of competition across all levels of the pro tiers of the club how do you feel about that from a managerial perspective um, look, it's 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 encouraging. It's positive. I mean, we just drafted. Uh, you know, in, in Bone, we drafted our second Mac. Uh, we didn't draft, but we acquired our second Mac Terman Trophy semifinalist this week. So um, that's that's positive. That's another uh, couple of kids that are going to come in and compete. And I think the biggest thing is just instead of having maybe guys who have washed out somewhere else and picking them up and hoping you can rehab them. You're taking a little bit younger players with a little bit more talent who you think maybe could really be something. And it doesn't mean they're all going to make it. And look, it doesn't mean that any of our academy kids are going to make it. They're going to have to come in and work and earn it and prove it. And but man, we got enough. We have enough of kids now that that we're going to we're going to throw them out there. And we're going to see what happens. Looking at Tucker in the first round selection there, really unique set of circumstances with the United States Air Force Academy background. Um, certainly seems like he is incredibly smart and dedicated to obviously what he's doing there. And you're going to see him a little bit later in May. Can you talk a little bit about that dynamic and the unique circumstances surrounding you know his selection today? Yeah, uh, picking a 20, uh, again, in a, in a flat draft where we, we didn't feel that there was that much exceptional talent. Um, you know, we really felt we brought back 22 guys this year. So we got a lot of money tied up in the cap already. We didn't really feel like we were in a position to move up in this draft. Uh, and so with Tucker, we really wanted to get somebody with of good character and good work ethic. And, you know, I think his resume speaks for itself in that regard. And throw in that he was born in Tacoma and, and you know, has a connection to uh, some of the military presence in Seattle. And I I think, look, I think it's a, it's a really good story, and he's an awesome kid, and I think we can't possibly lose by bringing a kid in like to that, to our club and our culture, and giving him a chance. And it may work, and it may not, and, um, you know, as I said, you know, we look at it as we have, uh, I think, now 11 kids signed uh, from the academy to S2, and if you throw in uh, these two draft picks and, and potentially a third-round guy coming in now, you put those 14 kids out there and then let them sort it out. The players ultimately make these decisions, and we'll see who's worth it and who wants it the most. Quick thoughts on Joel. He seemed to know his Sounders history. He knew that he was joining a decent line of Swedes there. Guys like Gustav Svensson, Eric Freeberg, Freddie Unberg, etc. Uh, thoughts on, on what he maybe brings to the table in that mix of competition. He's a smart Alec, first of all. I mean, his 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 uh, interview was uh, was something. Uh, he was the very first kid we interviewed, uh, and uh, he's got a sweetest sense of humor. I think it said it's it's something he borrowed from uh, Gustav somewhere along the way. So we'll be sure to get those guys together for for team meetings from the get go. But as you said, we've always had it's it's this kind of uh, dry sardonic uh, humor, and you know we had it with Eric Freeberg as well. And you know to state. To state the obvious, I mean, we've had really good success with that kind of personality in our locker room. Um, you know, whether it's Freeberg, whether it's Fenson, um, you know, and now Joel. And, and look, what matters more than anything is whether he's a good soccer player. And, and we'll figure that out and, um, you know, uh, you know we'll, we'll go from there. Last one for you, Ozzy Alonso signing elsewhere yesterday with Minnesota United. Um, you mentioned initially 22 players brought back, and now you're adding more candidates to that mix for preseason camp. Do so you look at it, just brass tacks, how do you feel about the club going into 2019, and what can fans expect to see between now and the time that we open camp? Um, I think you're going to see us going to camp more or less as we are right now. Um, still exploring some trades, but I actually think at this point nothing's going to move ahead of, say, early February. I think most teams are going to camp now with their picks, uh, and they'll go through the first phase, and I think it'll be in between first phase and second phase. You may still see some player movement. Um, you know, we're still working on some things from abroad, uh, but we really feel, again, like we're dealing from strength. Uh, you know, I think the, uh, we're excited for Ozzy that he got the opportunity that he did in Minnesota. Um, you know, really felt like a, a good landing spot for him there, and to get the contract that he did at you know, just really happy for a guy who's given everything to our club. And um, so, you know, you look at that and 
you look at a, a lineup, a starting lineup next year where potentially uh, Jordan Morris starts as the right wing uh, in the spot where we were, we were playing Christian, maybe a little bit out of position last year, and then you drop Christian in to be the eight uh, next to Gustav the six, and you think, all right, well, we made the final with that group in 2017, um, you know, and Jordan was hurt for part of that. But um, I think, you know, if you look at that as a whole, we're more mobile in the middle just with those guys uh, with Christian playing back there. Uh, and we have a little bit more pace up top with, with Jordan starting up top. So who knows how, how the coaching staff lands on it. And, you know, I don't want to put them in a box. They'll have the whole preseason to experiment with it. But I know we look at it on paper and say that we feel like uh, we're better now than we were even at the last end of last season. And, um you know, that, that's what the time will tell if that's true or not, but uh, we'll, we're, we're excited about 2019.